Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today we are talking about what is, in my opinion, the most painful tech line to grind through. And I'm sure it's probably up there with most of your most painful uh, to grind through lines. And that is the Italian battleships. Now, before we get into why they're so painful, there are quite a few tech trees that have rough spots. Pretty much every tech tree does, in my opinion. Uh, the only ones that I don't think have any truly terrible rough spots anymore are the mainline German battleships and the German battle cruisers and the British battle cruisers. Those are three tech lines that Wargaming somehow managed to pull off just a sweet grind all the way through, in my opinion at least. For other lines, like the American Battleships, the Colorado's a pretty low spot, along with the, with the New Mexico. Um, the Japanese Battleships, well, before it got buffed, the Isabo was a pretty low spot. But that's another line that I think is pretty excellent all the way up and down nowadays. The, shoot, I mean, pretty much every single cruiser line, the Tier 6 and the Tier 7, are some freaking just absolute pain pain painful experiences a lot of head bashing against the wall because uh, at those tiers cruisers still aren't quite heavily armored enough to really either angle or um be able to stand up to a lot of higher tier battleships and cruisers and you don't quite have a hill yet on most of the lines there so yeah most cruisers tier 6 tier 7 is pretty painful at tier 8 most of them at least the armor is decent enough to where if you angle properly you can at least bounce most of the shells coming in at you and that's when they start to kind of get their heels but for the italian battleships it's just pain until you get to the tier 9 now why is that well because of course, the battleships have to have a gimmick. And so many new tech lines are following this route of there's some gimmick or super special ability that only this line has. For example, the Dutch cruisers, the airstrikes uh, for the British battle cruisers. Oh, not, not battle cruisers, for the British heavy cruisers. They have the heel, although I, I actually do like that line quite a bit. Sometimes the gimmicks work out, sometimes they don't. And the Italian battleships, in my opinion at least, the gimmick doesn't work out and it makes it a very painful experience and of course that gimmick is the sap shells along with the smoke consumable that's supposed to kind of help the Italian battleships play how they're meant to be played so sap let's talk about that sap is well in the game technically all it is it's HE with increased pin values with a negative fire value uh, if you look in the games files sap is it's literally HE with like negative fire chance applied to it so you can't somehow get a like a one percent fire chance if you dump all your skills into the, uh, the the skills that increase your fire chance and then put your your um, fire flags on but it can pin a lot and it does a lot of alpha damage, but it's not AP, so it can't pin into citadels most of the times, unless you're talking about some light cruisers or some very, very, very lightly armored battleships. So it does a lot of alpha damage, and it can pin quite a bit of armor, but not deep enough to do citadel damage on most well-armored ships, and it cannot start fires. So the gimmick is you can pin pretty much anything, and you do a lot of alpha damage, but you can't set any fires with sap. That's how sap works in this game. And the Italian battleships, of course, have battleship caliber guns. That is quite fearsome when you think about, like, the Italian cruisers. If you were around when those Italian cruisers came out, um, wow, especially at high tier, sap, whoops, sap hurt. That whole season of clan battles, season 9, it was one Hakuru and six Venezia. And let me tell you, I, I developed a spiteful, just absolute vengeance a vengeful, a vengeful attitude toward the Venezia after that season of clan battles because I got tired of being chunked by it for 20k every 15 seconds. Then they, they have nerfed it since then. But apply that to, of course, battleship caliber guns. And even the smaller caliber guns in this tech line have like 10, 10k sap alpha, which is quite fearsome, especially again considering that you can pin pretty much anything with that. Um, with that ammunition type unless it's like an angled armor belt or an armored strip like some of the soviet large ships have so the idea is you can get good consistent damage out of battleship caliber guns but can you really well 
In order to make this munition type anywhere near balance and to avoid a repeat of something like the Venezia, they of course had to take the accuracy for the Italian battleships and just throw it out the window. If you've played the Italian battleships, the dispersion is not great. Now, they did go through and they did crank up the dispersion or the Sigma values for quite a few of the Italian battleships after the Commander rework turned out to not uh, be that popular and one skill had to be removed, and that skill is everyone's favorite skill, Deadeye, with, which definitely the Italian battleships were designed with in mind. And for those of you that weren't around, uh, Deadeye was a skill that would give you a 10% boost to your dispersion if you were undetected. See, that sounds like a great thing. Oh, it was. We, we had quite a time with it. I made a whole meme compilation video about that. I'll link that in the description or in a pinned comment or in a card up here right now if editing me remembers. And it was quite nutty. Uh, Kremlin got unnerfed. Um, Thunder had no dispersion, nor did the Shikishima. And the Italian battleships, yeah, the, the guns were a bit more accurate than they were now. But of course, once that skill was removed, uh, that was the real pain, real pain right there for the Italian battleships. Because, again, they have the uh, exhaust smoke consumable, which means you can be unfired and fire your guns at range. Because you have, of course, a mobile smoke screen following you at round. So... After that, they did, of course, crank down, I'm um, sorry, uh, improve the, the dispersion and crank up the Sigma a little bit on the Italian battleships, but it's still pretty painful, especially at, well, shoot, I would say from Tier 5 to Tier 7 is the pure pain of the Italian battleships. The Tier 8, the Vittoro, is a little bit better because it's, well, it's the Vittoro, it's got the, it, it, it's a Roma class, it's got the, well, not a Roma class, it, it's the Vittorio class. It's the same hole as the Roma, so it's got the good armor of the Roma, it's got the good speed and the good maneuverability of the Roma, and you do have the smoke screen. So now you have a ship that's pretty tanky and pretty maneuverable and stealthy with the smoke screen, and with a full consummate build, it's pretty nice too. And now you can get a little bit closer and deliver your sap at closer range once you get to the tier 8. It's not until the tier 9 that the Italian battleships, in my opinion, actually start to get, well, good. Because from tier 9 up, you start to have a very large amount of guns on your ship for their tier. Tier 9 has 12, uh, the tier 10, the Colombo, has uh, 15. So, yeah, I'm sorry, 16. Math, 4 guns per turret, 4 turrets at 16 guns. That's why I'm not a math teacher, ladies and gentlemen. So now you're just throwing so much crap out the wall at higher tier that you're going to hit something. However, you still do run into matches like the match watching the background, where it's a high tier match. Um, this one wasn't a uh, steamroll right out of the gate. It devolved into one toward the end. But the entirety of the match, for the most part, was at long range, and the Columbo just doesn't have the range. Now, I have Cincinnati on my Columbo, and once Cincinnati gets a kill, you do get an extended main battery gun range, and you do have a spotter plane on the Columbo to extend your range out a bit more. But even with both of those going for it, they, it still has short range. So that's not just a Columbo thing, that's the thing up and down the line. The ships have terrible dispersion, they have a short range, and they only have sap. They don't have any HE. They have pretty good AP if you can manage to get it to hit, but again, getting it to hit like with SAP is a bit of a tall order. So you have, again, smaller caliber guns for your tier with no HE, so that means that there are some situations when some heavily armored ships, like battleships, and some of the more heavily armored cruisers go bow into you, their effective armor is too thick to where SAP simply can't really do much. And plus, from a bow and profile, as I'm sure you're seeing in some of the background footage, uh, the dispersion is not really going to be hitting much, even with the 16 guns on the Colombo, which is kind of rough. Very rough indeed. So, and those aren't exactly rare situations anymore in the current meta, where games are pretty far away, even starting from hell. Even Tier 7 games are starting to get a little bit further away, more and more so, it feels like, every day. Now, at lower tier, like the tier 4, I think the tier 4 works pretty well. We all got to play here in early access when they uh, released her with the uh, with the Twitch drops. And at tier 4, you're still in, up in everybody's face, so that ship felt pretty good. But again, from tier 5 to tier 8, the whole line's just such a pain to get there. You have small guns that you can't really overmatch anything when you do switch to your AP, which the Italian battleships, by the way, keep sap loaded unless you have a beautiful broadside 
and you know that you're going to Citadel them. Otherwise, keep sap loaded. It's got a higher alpha than your AP. Oh, not to mention, too, of course the sap doesn't do the full damage that it should against destroyers because, naturally, a 15-inch sap shell hitting a DD would pretty much cause it to cease to exist if they applied the same values that they do with, like, the cruiser caliber sap, uh, sap shells. And they did actually do that during testing, have the battleship sap, uh, sap do a full pin value to... I'm sorry, full damage value to DDs, and yeah, it was just like going around just Thanos snapping DDs, which would be nice, but rather than meet somewhere in the middle, because, you know, the guns are still pretty inaccurate, and when you do land a couple of shells on a DD with the ammunition type that's, you know, sap, semi-armor piercing, that's great for doing damage to lightly armored ships, we, we can't have that. So, it's just kind of useless against DDs. Well, it's better than the AP because you still do have a better alpha. So, it does more damage at least. But, it, it's still mini minuscule in comparison to what it really should be. So, you have all of that in a tech line that you're, again, forced to go through if you want to get to the good stuff. Which which is really weird because a lot of times the tier 9 is kind of doo-doo. And then the tier 10 is really what you really want. But, in this case, the tier 9 is really in my opinion, really quite good. The tier 10 is very, very, very excellent in my opinion. The Columbo, even though you get matches like this where, unfortunately, again, everything's just so far away and your team gets rolled on one flank that you don't really have the range or the time to really do what you need to do. That's just the way the game is today. And that's why, in my opinion, this is the most painful line to grind because you're stuck with ships like that from tier 5 through tier 8. And yeah, sure, they do have the exhaust smoke to where they can smoke up, get in a good position, nice and close. And yeah, I think that works pretty well from the tier 6 to the tier 7, uh, from what I've played with those ships. But from the tier 8, I mean, tier 8, there's so many ships now with radar, hydro, that of course just nullify your smoke. That you just can't do it anymore. Maybe like two years ago before everything and their mom had radar at tier 8... And above, sure, it probably would have worked pretty well back then, but nowadays, mm, it can still happen, and it does still happen, but there's been many a time that I've thought, okay, um, there's two or three cruisers over here, I'm going to pop up, pop my smoke, get in close, and there was a fourth cruiser that wasn't detected that, sure enough, had radar and ruined that push for me. But, again, you'd be surprised how often players don't realize there is a battleship-sized smoke cloud moving toward them at 32 knots. That still does happen. But, yes, this is an absolute pain of a grind. Would I recommend grinding through it? I still would. The Columbo is a fantastic ship, in my opinion. One that will give you pretty consistent results. I mean, even in this match, we still did well over 100,000 damage in this match. And a match that was definitely not uh, going in favor of the Columbo. And this was um, my second match I had with Columbo uh, today, so I was still getting used to her aim. Because I haven't played her in quite some time. If you hadn't noticed from the couple of times I whiffed my shots on the Smolensk and then the GK, that was pretty painful with the, re with the reload time of the Columbo's guns. But, yeah, that's my two cents on the Italian battleships. I haven't really taken a look at them in some time. Again, I still think the Columbo and the Lepanto are worth the grind. Uh, if anything else, the Lepanto, once you get there, it, it's just a, a breeze to get to the, to the Columbo, because now you have a large number of guns that, even though your dispersion isn't that great, you're throwing so much crap at the target, some of it is going to hit. So guys, let me know in the comments down below, what is your most painful grind? Um, the Dutch Cruisers probably be my number two um, spot, especially now with submarines being introduced and them not having any ASW. Which, uh, Wargaming, are we still going to do anything about that yet? Because, yeah. That kind of sucks. <laughs> but anyway, guys, again, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We're getting very close to 40,000 subs, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.